Is it possible to make a hyper-realistic cake only using things that you can buy at your local grocery store? I don't know. You may have noticed, I use a lot of specialty cake items when I make my cakes. Items that are sometimes hard to find. Like when I used molding putty to make this cake. And when I used a ball tool to make this cake. Today I'm challenging myself to make a cake only using items that I buy from one single trip to the store. Will I forget to buy something? Will I have everything I need in stock? Can I even make a hyper-realistic cake without access to my specialty cake tools? And most importantly, what am I even gonna make? I don't know. My name is Natalie Sidesurf, and I make cakes that don't look like cakes. And today, I'm gonna make a cake only using items that I find at my local store. I can only work with what's available at this store. And the first thing I noticed is they do not sell modeling chocolate, which is what I typically sculpt with. So I'm gonna have to think outside the box here. The first thing that jumped out at me is the brown sugars. This light brown sugar is looking a lot like sand. I'm immediately thinking I could do a beach scene. So I'm gonna head over to the toy aisle. I'm hoping they have some beachy stuff. And I am not disappointed. They have beach buckets and toys galore. I'm gonna get one of these buckets because they come with this little shovel. I had one of these little shovels. You had one of these. I feel like everybody's had these little shovels. It's nostalgic and I want to try to make it. Edible, of course. I'm seeing a lot of toys for making sand castles and I'm sold. I think I can use these. I'm hoping I can use these. I was worried that I couldn't come up with something that is so realistic I could trick people into believing it's the real thing. But I think I have a chance with this cake idea. That's it. I'm going to try to make a hyper-realistic sand castle cake. I have a strict rule for this challenge. I'm doing this all in one trip. So if I forget something, I'm out of luck. What else am I going to need? Let's head to the cake aisle. I am very happy to see that at least they have fondant. I am amateur when it comes to using fondant, but it's the only thing that I can think to use to make that little shovel. I can't decide on a color right now, so I'm just gonna get a bunch of them. I'm giving myself a day and a half to make this cake. So rather than take the time to bake a cake, I'm gonna use one of these pre-made cakes. Husband Dave likes strawberry cake, so we're going strawberry. I think this size should work. You're coming with me, strawberry cake with strawberry filling. But just to be on the safe side, I might grab one more cake. The last thing I wanna do is run out of cake. Oh, look at that cupcake. It's pretty big for a cupcake. And I think it might just be the perfect size for this particular mold. Oh yeah. If it's perfectly in the red mold. I did purchase a few other items that I think I might need for this one. And look what I found, some Mr. Beast cookies. I'll get these just to snack on. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. <laughs> Let's start with the shovel, because I have a game plan for the shovel. I purchased three different colors of fondant, yellow, green, and white. And I can't tell from this packaging which is which, so I'm gonna mix them all up and pick one at random. And that will be the color I use. Should I choose one, two, or three? This is fun, I never get to do stuff like this. I choose one. One, you are the winner, let's see what color our shovel's gonna be. And it is yellow. <laughs> the same color as the real one. <laughs> now this yellow is really, really saturated, so I am going to mix it with some white to lighten it up a bit. I think this will help make it look a little more realistic and less fondanty. I'm gonna be honest with you all. I am not a big fan of working with fondant. I've always had a hard time manipulating it, which is why I always use modeling chocolate. The two textures are very different. Modeling chocolate is closer to clay in consistency. When you press your finger into it, it stays in that shape. Where fondant, it's more like sculpting with a dense marshmallow. <laughs> when you press into it, it doesn't hold the mark as well and it kind of bounces back. Like it has a memory and it wants to go back to its original shape, like when you press into a marshmallow. It's really great for some things, just not hyper-realistic cakes, in my opinion, of course. But like I said earlier, they didn't have any modeling chocolate at the store. It's a little too specialty, so I'm using fondant, and I am trying my best. <laughs> I'm just glad I remembered to purchase a blade while I was at the store. I don't know what else I could cut this with. Fondant can get really sticky, so this is taking me quite a bit longer than it normally would if I was using modeling chocolate. But again, it's just because I don't use fondant very often. I bet if I had more practice, I'd be better at this. <laughs> I think that's as good as I'm gonna to get it. So now I'm gonna set it aside to dry. Let's bust out the brown sugar. And if this doesn't look like sand, I don't know what does. Now let's see if it packs like sand. Oh geez, I hit the red. I gotta do it over. <laughs> I did it again. My goodness, my coordination's off today. Get it together, Natalie. All right, I got the three molds here. I'm gonna start with red. I have a plan, but I have no idea if it's gonna work. I'm taking handfuls of brown sugar and I'm pressing it up against the walls of the mold, kind of packing it in there, just like Sam. Only I'm leaving the center hollow because that's where I'm gonna place my cake. The thing I'm most worried about is when I release the castle mold from the cake, the brown sugar doesn't keep its shape and it like starts to crumble. So for this green mold, I'm gonna 
gonna try something different. I'm gonna brush a little water on the inside walls of the mold because I know that once water touches sugar, it gets really sticky and it hardens. So I think it might have a better chance of keeping its shape and not crumbling, but I won't know until I release it from the mold later. I did notice that it's harder to get the sugar to stick to the walls when there's water on them, but I was able to make it work. There's one more thing that I'm worried about. I'm nervous that when I go to release the mold, the brown sugar sticks to it and doesn't release. So for this last mold, I'm gonna brush oil on the inside of it. It's very common to use oil to keep baked goods from sticking to the sides of pans. So I think this might work. Do I sound paranoid or what? <laughs> Whenever I try something new, it's inevitable that something goes wrong. So I'm trying my best to predict what might happen. I've got three tries here, three molds, three tries. This yellow mold is pretty narrow. So I'm using a I can't use that tool. I didn't buy that at the store. I just caught myself. I gotta follow the rules. Rules say I can only use things that I just bought at the store. My finger's gonna have to do. <laughs> I should have looked to see if they had sculpting tools, but I didn't. Those would have been really nice to have right about now. All right, I've got three molds here. Yellow, I used oil. Green, I used water. Red, I didn't use anything. One of these has gotta work, right? I wanna mention, I did make a very simple American buttercream to use on this cake because I'm not a fan of store-bought frosting. Before I fill the molds with cake, I'm gonna slather some buttercream in there. I hope it helps each of the castles to keep their shape. Uh, maybe I'm not. Do you wear clothes or know someone who does? Well, get yourself some more by heading over to shop.sidesurfcakes.com. That's where you can get some Sidesurf Cake Studio clothes. We also have coffee mugs, stickers, beach towels, all kinds of stuff. I'll put a link below so you don't get lost on your way to the store. And now back to the cake. The buttercream is not sticking to that sugar. Gonna keep trying. <sighs> Look, it just comes right off. All right, I'm gonna try to fix this because I really think I need that buttercream layer for stability. I'm gonna place all three molds in the fridge to chill. And this buttercream, it's just, it's too thick. It's hard to spread. So I popped it in the microwave for about 15 seconds. And I don't know if you can tell, but this is a much smoother consistency. It'll definitely be easier to spread now, but will it be easy enough? I don't know. The sugar is colder, the buttercream is warmer. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah. That's spreading on nicely. It's totally working. I think it was a combination of both of those things that made it work. We are one step closer to our goal, our hyper-realistic sandcastle cake goal. It's really starting to hit me that I'm eventually gonna have to flip these things over, like a real sandcastle. And I won't even know if they work until the very end. You see, there is a very real chance that these cakes just crumble. This brown sugar is the key to making this cake look hyper-realistic. And if I don't use it this way with these molds, I, uh, uh I, don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do, honestly. There's a good chance I'd fail this challenge. <laughs> Now let's turn this cake into a sandcastle cake. First thing I gotta do is scrape off all that frosting. I forgot to buy an offset spatula at the store, so I gotta use a butter knife. Ah, what am I doing? I can't use this turntable. It is definitely a specialty item. You cannot buy that at your local store. These habits, it's such a habit to use that turntable. Now let's talk about that butter knife. No, I did not buy the butter knife at the store, at least during that visit. So this is kind of like, it's, it's like sort of not fair, but I also don't think of a butter knife as a specialty item. It's one of those things that everybody has. Oh my, is this an excuse? I mean, I'm coming up with excuses. It's because I feel guilty. I should have just scraped it off with my hands. This is my first time doing something like this. I gotta be more strict. What do you guys think? Should I have not used the butter knife? Slight adjustment to the rules. Everyday utensils are allowed. But that's it. No more freebies. I hope you guys forgive me for the unexpected adjustment, but I will say that cutting a cake with a butter knife is not an easy feat. It's like cutting a loaf of bread with a butter knife. <laughs> the cupcake still fits snugly in the red mold, so I'm gonna cut it into two layers because I gotta fill this cake with my signature green buttercream, of course. And would you look at that? Surprise cream filling. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. I am so happy that I bought that cupcake. It fits in the red mold so perfectly. I love it. Now I gotta figure out how to sculpt the six inch round strawberry cake into the other two shapes. I am just freehand carving the cake into shapes that I think are gonna fit into these molds because I didn't buy parchment paper to make a stencil like I usually do. I didn't buy like pencils or scissors or anything. So yeah, a stencil's not an option. The good news is the shape is simple enough that I'm able to just like cram some cake in there. I am very curious how this cake cutting is gonna look. We'll see how that goes down later. I assume it's not gonna be my prettiest. More importantly, what's worse than an ugly cake cutting is cutting into a cake that's supposed to look like a sandcastle, but in Instead, it's just like mounds of brown sugar because the brown sugar didn't keep the shape of the sandcastle, which at this point is uh, my biggest fear. On a more positive note, I am glad that I bought these pre-made cakes because there is no way I'd finish this cake in a day and a half if I had to bake the cakes too. Well, technically husband Dave is the one who bakes the cakes, but you know what I'm saying, you get it. As I'm filling these molds with cake, I can't help but think about my shovel. I just don't know that it looks plastic enough. A really great way to make something look plastic is if you add an edible glue 
glaze to it to make it kind of shiny. But those are specialty purchases. <gasps> I've got an idea. Oil's shiny. I realized I bought oil for this cake. So I'm brushing a little oil on my shovel to make it look more plastic. This isn't why I bought the oil, but I'm glad I have it. Oof, that's a relief. I really lucked out on this one. This challenge is a lot more difficult than I thought it was gonna be. I'm about to place all three molds on this sand and I have no clue if any of them are gonna turn out. I approached all three differently. I'm hoping at least one of them looks good. And what if they don't even look hyper-realistic? I have no clue what they're gonna look like. And worst of all, if these don't turn out, I don't have a cake. All right, this is it. Oof, oh no. And there you have it, a sandcastle cake. It worked! I was so convinced that they were gonna completely fall apart, but they didn't! And the best looking one is the red one! I didn't use any oil or water on that one. Alright, I cannot wait to cut this cake. I can't believe all three are standing. It's crazy. I'm so happy. It's so cute. If you like this video, subscribe to this channel. I post a brand new cake every week. I'll see you next week for another cake.